Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today we're gonna talk about the six most important things to consider when deciding to breed your goat. You might be asking yourself why I'm talking about this right now. Didn't kidding season just end? Well, it did but it's already time to start thinking about next kidding season. Nigerian dwarf goats come into heat all year round, which means you can have milk all year round too if you have two different uh, basically breeding seasons. The criteria to consider breeding is the same no matter what time of year you're considering. This is Rihanna. She's the first doe that I ever retained that was bred here. She is out of Stevie Nicks and Sir Elton John, who's a sire that we used to have on site here. She's a beautiful specimen and she grew very quickly. She just turned a year old about six weeks ago. That age is the first thing that I am going to look at when I'm thinking about breeding a goat. Conventional wisdom says you can breed a doling as early as seven months old, as long as they meet a weight criteria, depending on the breed. I personally find that to be too early. I'm not happy with the size of my goats at seven months old to want to split their nutritional intake with babies. I wanna make sure that they reach their full physical potential and their full size. So I like to wait until a year to breed my goats. I will occasionally make an exception. Rhianne, and if the timing had been different, I could have bred a little before a year because she's very large. She is actually, I think at this point, taller than her dam and wider as well. Isn't quite filled out as much. Her rib cage isn't quite as sprung as Stevie's yet, but that will come with time. Age can be a consideration the other way as well. If you have a mature doe who has never been bred, say four, five, six years old, you've probably missed your window of opportunity. They've probably put on a pretty significant amount of body fat and either will not get pregnant or would have a difficult pregnancy and delivery. If you've got a doe that's approaching two and you haven't bred her yet, but you want to, think about doing it very soon. The second thing that I think about when I am deciding whether to breed a doling or not, or a yearling, is weight. Traditional logic with a Nigerian dwarf will tell you 40 pounds. I'm much more comfortable if they are closer to 45, 50. Uh, most Nigerian dwarf does will be around uh, 60 pounds when they're not bred. So you really want them to be more like 80% of their full weight, not 40 pounds. Rhiannon here is easily 50 to 55 pounds. So she's been in a great range for quite a while. And of course, just like with age, weight can go the, the wrong way too. If a goat is over conditioned, you may not be successful in breeding them either. The fourth thing that I'm going to consider when deciding if I should breed a doe or not is width. Width is incredibly important, not only as a characteristic to breed into your goats, but for an easy and safe delivery. I think Rihanna knows it's going to rain and she really wants off this milk stand right now. But I wanna show you how nice and wide she is. <laughs> Are you camera shy? She's very polite and uh, doesn't want you to see her back end. Now, like I said, some of width is very visual and you can tell, but a great way to check is to take your hand and check the width of the hip bones, preferably when your goat is standing. Come on, silly girl. All right, here's a trick. When your goat won't stand up, just hold them by the tail. They figure it out pretty quick. But you wanna feel their hip bones here you can see that and uh, make sure that they're about when you put your hand around there that you know you're not squeezing down really low that the rump is really the width of your hand and then you know babies can safely fit out of there another thing that I like to check are the bones back here and their placement Rhiannon looks great. She's actually wider than her dam that just turned three years old. Now, of course, the dam is done growing um, and Rhiannon still has a little bit of potential to expand there. So I'm really happy with that improvement from dam to daughter. The fifth thing that I'm going to look at when deciding if a doe or a yearling or a doling is ready to be bred is the overall health of the animal. And the way that I do that is I check the FAMACHA score. 
I check for external parasites, and I check the body conditioning score. Rhiannon's Fomacha looks great, probably the best it could, and that tells me that she does not have an internal parasite overload right now. If she did, I would of course want to address that and make sure that it was resolved before I bred her. There are certain dewormers that cannot safely be used during pregnancy, so if you run into a parasite issue where you need to use something like that and your dough is already bred, I mean, you just have to risk it. Obviously you can't lose your dough. So the best thing to do is make sure that that problem doesn't exist in the first place. Now the sixth thing I consider has nothing to do with the goat, really. It has to do with seasons, my schedule, the place that I have to put goats, and that is the timing of when the goat will give birth. A miniature breed like a Nigerian dwarf will have a pregnancy that lasts about 145 days. So my initial thought was I was gonna breed Rhiannon at the beginning of May, which would put her due date right around the end of September. I think I'm gonna push that out a little bit longer, and I'll talk about why here in a little bit. But the reason that I was looking for a due date at the end of September was I want to have milk at that point, and I'm gonna be drying off does that will kid the following season at that point. You can milk a goat until about two months before they are to deliver their next kids. I like to do it a little earlier than that, make sure that they can put some weight back on because milking is really strenuous on the body and it burns a lot of calories. That's really just a personal thing for me. I'm fortunate enough to have the number of goats that I can do that and that I can uh, breed at two different times during the year. You do you, it's obviously perfectly safe to, to milk your goats. Just make sure you dry them off two months before they're due to kid. Timing wise, other things that I like to consider are things that are going on with my kids, my work and travel schedule, holidays. In 2019, we had three does kid in December and one doe kid at the beginning of January and it made for an incredibly stressful holiday season. This year, I'm hoping that I can have two goats that will kid in the October time frame, and then I'll probably push the rest out to January, February. October, November would be nice because it's before we get into the big swing of the holidays, and January, February, I know that, the, that we're home. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. The kids don't have a lot going on. Um, no matter what sport they're in, that time's a little more predictable for us and we're not gone extensive amounts of time. Some things that you may want to think about in terms of timing include your housing for your goats. If you've got a place where you can put them and ensure that kids are warm and safe in the winter, then winter can be a great time to deliver. I like it because I don't have to worry about the same level of parasites as I would when it's warm. Just a preference that I have, but I also have somewhere to keep my goats that has uh, electricity and warm water and, and the appropriate shelter for them. If I didn't have that, then I might have to reconsider my schedule. If you're kidding during warmer months, obviously you don't have to worry so much about uh, a kid being born and getting chilled and, and not making it because of that. And so you can be a little less glued to your house and your barn, I suppose. But if you're like me, you're glued to your house and your barn anyway, so yeah. All right, Rhiannon. Are you ready to be done? All right, I'm gonna take Rhiannon back in and I'm gonna bring out Scarlett, who is my other yearling, and I'm hoping to breed her about the same time as Rhiannon. We'll walk through the same steps and see what you think. What are you doing? What are you doing? There you go. You can probably tell from the outset that Scarlett is not quite as big as Rhiannon. Scarlett turned one about two weeks ago. She has been a little bit slower growing than Rhiannon, but just recently hit a major growth spurt. All of a sudden, she's so much taller and so much wider. And I don't know that she will ever be as big as Rhiannon. Her dam is not as large as the buck and doe that Rhiannon came from, but she's filling out really nicely. Okay, there's our answer to criteria number one. Scarlett is of an age where she could be safely bred. Let's talk about weight. Scarlett is over 40 pounds, but I'd say she's more in the 40 to 45 range. I can tell she has put on some weight lately because her spine and her hip bones are not as pronounced. And that's definitely something that we wanna see 
when we're getting ready to breed a goat, that they've got a nice appropriate layer of body fat. So I'm happy with the direction that she's going there. I wouldn't say I'd be comfortable breeding her in two weeks with the way her fat covering and, and size is right now, but it does feel pretty good. The third thing that I want to consider, remember, is height. So a couple weeks ago, I would have said, no way to Scarlett, she's not anywhere near ready to be bred. But now that she hit this growth spurt and she's very close to full height, you know, maybe within an inch or so, I'd be much more apt to breed her. The reason that I look at height as a consideration is twofold. If you do have a doling that's growing very quickly and you want to show that goat, you don't want them to be over 22 and a half inches here at the withers when they're full grown. So making sure that you breed that goat at say, you know, nine months versus a year or after a year would help to make sure that they don't end up over height. On the flip side, if you breed them too early, you could end up with a goat that just didn't have the energy and the nutrition to put into height and put it into babies instead. All mammals are like that, right? If you've had a baby, your wife has had a baby, you know how that is. Everything in your body goes to the babies first. So same thing with goats, which is why I'm careful to make sure that they are tall enough. Um, not only because I want them to reach their full potential, but also I don't want to have to be like this to get under them and milk because they're so short. I want to make sure my bucket fits under there and I can get my hands under there and milk. <laughs> All right, Scarlett's a little more patient on the stand here, so let's check out her width. I'm actually pretty happy with her width at this point. She's not the widest goat that I have, but certainly wide enough to safely deliver. All right, let's take a look at her overall health. Your overall cuteness is a 10 out of 10, right? Overall cuteness. So matcha looks great on Scarlett too. Ah. <sighs> Good for matcha scores after a couple weeks of rain in the spring. Feels really good, right? Really good. Now let's look at external parasites and generally the condition of her coat. Scarlet's in the process of losing that thick winter undercoat and has a little bit of dry skin. Coat's a smidge washed out, so could probably use some copper, but I don't see any evidence of lice or any sort of external parasites there. In terms of the dandruff and stuff, I mean, happens this time of year. Once it's a smidge warmer, everybody will get a bath, like a nice soothing, moisturizing shampoo, get trimmed, and that kind of clears up all that, you know, winter stuff for everybody. We all feel like that after winter, right? Dry skin and ugh cabin fever. Although I don't think we're getting rid of the cabin fever anytime soon right now, huh? I'm gonna give her a copper bolus, but you know, overall, very good health. When I'm talking about body conditioning score, the idea is that you check the spine and the hips and the brisket and see what kind of fat covering there is there. There's a fancy number scale and technique that you can learn. I haven't done that yet, but what I do know is, I'm gonna check here, this is the brisket. You wanna make sure that you're not feeling sternum bones there. That should, area should definitely be covered completely with muscle and fat. Think about when you get a brisket from a cow, what that's like, that's what you're trying to feel there, just on a much, much smaller scale. The other thing is here on the spine, you wanna make sure that you're not feeling individual vertebrae. You should be able to feel the spine, otherwise you have an overweight goat. And same with the hips. You can feel the hip bones, but uh, they're not pointy. They're nicely cushioned. Right, girl? You're perfect. Yeah, you're perfect. You're perfect. And our sixth thing to take into account here is timing of the birth. Now, I mentioned that I was thinking about waiting a little bit to breed Rhiannon, and I would explain why. Well, the reason why is Scarlet. I think in six to nine weeks, 
Scarlett will be in great shape to be bred. And I want her and Rhiannon to be able to be bred about the same time. I like when I'm putting the does in the kidding pens for them to have a friend there with them. So they're not upset. They're not trying to get out of the kidding stalls. I want them to be content and relaxed. Rhiannon and Scarlett luckily are pretty well bonded and will make a great pair. I'm gonna wait a few weeks longer on Rhiannon than I would typically have to, just to make sure that she's got a labor buddy. Nobody wants to go through this stuff on their own. And there you have it, the six important factors I consider as I decide when to breed a goat. Age, weight, height, overall health, width, and the timing of the birth. I hope this was beneficial for you. Good luck in your breeding, and come back for the next video when I'm gonna talk about what I do to prepare for a healthy breeding season.